from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Tonight we have a show just chock full of information about things that are going on in your community and ways that you can find out more about how to become involved. Starting off tonight, I have with me Allison Hart, my friend who has been here uh, several times, and I'm happy to have you here again. Allison is the CEO of the Gresham Area Chamber of Commerce and Visitors Center. Thank you, Monica. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be back with you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Now, the, um, we're winding up the, the end of 2012. You've, you've done a lot of stuff. You've been very busy this year. Um, but before we go into some of the things that you've accomplished and maybe what you hope to accomplish next year, for those who maybe are not familiar with the Chamber, could you tell us just a little bit about what your mission is, why why people should become involved with the Chamber of Commerce, and, and what your what your mission is and what your goals are. Th certainly. Is um, that too much to ask? <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot, huh? Yeah, all at once. Um, that's why I make notes so I can cheat there and you understand go. where you're I'm good. going. You're good, you're um, good. You know, the, the Chamber has been serving the community since 1931, so we're a long-standing organization, and um, we are a nonprofit, a private nonprofit business association, and our our mission is to bring bringing together and serving the business community and so really being the hub how I think of it I have a, I always like to talk with my hands but we're like the the spoke um, the center of the spoke in a wheel and so everything comes through us and we keep all people connected Rome, all, all exactly to exactly the and so there's there's a variety of things we do but we have four pillars that we work upon and then everything else fans out from there and it's promoting the community um, connecting businesses and people essentially mm -hmm. business and people um, advancing a, a vibrant and prosperous local economy and then representing the business voice to government uh, on all levels. Right. And those are some things I don't think everybody knows that the Chamber does, especially the last one I think. Um, so how do you go about doing these things? We're very busy, first yeah. of all. Yes. Um, there's a lot of different things we do. Um, one of the things, for example, is we have a, a business directory, and I brought that before. I didn't mm -hmm. bring it this mm -hmm. time, but I use one it all of the, the time. one of the great things this year is we received award an award from the Oregon State Chamber of Commerce um, for our particular publication as That's the best great. in the state for mid-sized chambers. So we're really excited about it that because be. it shows that our work of promoting through our directory is is effective and um, was noted. Um, we also, as you said, have a visitor center, and we have people who come in but as a part of that we do a lot of outreach we have a visitor map that we produce um, for the region it's actually the whole East Multnomah County region which okay. we do cover um, although we're called the Gresham area chamber we cover Fairview Wood Village we even have members in Boring Damascus we have oh. members in Troutdale we have members in East Portland so it's it's more broad-reaching right, so right. we're more interested in um, economic health for the full region not just the Gresham the right. city of Gresham because everything is so interconnected connected and that's mm -hmm. why it's so important to think for of all of the jurisdictions in the area. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the uh, award you got for your directory. Did you not also get an award for um, being one of the best nonprofits to work for? We did. We actually in the medium nonprofit category we were 19th on the list of 100 best nonprofits to work yeah. for. So that's that was really impressive. exciting that's this great. year as yeah. well. Yeah. So do you agree? Is it a good place to it's work? It's a great place yeah. to work. But <laughs> I'm the boss so I can't really be partial. Oh, well, so. well that says something for you then I think. Right. So you, you talk about um, promoting the community, and that's and that's one thing you do. Um, connecting business and people. What you have um, events, you you sponsor events. What 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 else do you do besides the directories and the maps and and right. Well, we do a lot of education, but two of our key things that um, have happened this fall. One of them was our economic summit, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. where we do a half day presentation on what's happening in the region. What are the economic development things that are taking place? Um, how do we work together as a region to strengthen our area? What are the the challenges that we face, and what are the great things that we're doing? Um, we were fortunate this year to have the governor as our keynote speaker, which was very That's exciting great. for us. Yeah. We couldn't remember the last time a governor had come out and spoken for the chamber, not in an election cycle. Oh, so nice. um, that <laughs> felt like a feather in our caps yes. this year. And it was a great um, 
conference uh, day, we had someone from the port speak. We had someone from Boeing talk about their expansion. Um, Mayor Bemis of Gresham spoke about what, what's happening in the city of Gresham. That's where we're growing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really a briefing of everything and then some looking forward as well on that particular um, event. But there's another event that we had that was very exciting because it was our inaugural um, and it was our Business Excellence Awards and we just completed just that, that last in. week. Yes, yes. Right. And um, for many years, the Chamber did an event called the Golden Note. Right. And this is a new iteration of the Golden Note. The Golden Note was specifically for nonprofit volunteers. Right. I acknowledging I several of those. Right. Yes. And I believe mm -hmm. at some point Metris had put up some of their volunteers for mm -hmm. nominees oh, yes. as well. Yes, did. Um, and we felt that as an organization, since we're largely about we're serving the community but largely serving the business community that we needed to acknowledge the amazing things that our businesses do in this area so we expanded the event and, and changed the name um, to business excellence awards and we gave six awards this year um, we gave let's see I have to look at my cheat sheet uh, two business excellence awards one for small business one for large we had an entrepreneur of the year and then in the tradition of the golden note we gave two volunteer of the year awards one that was put forth through a vol for a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. and one um, that we gave that was put forth for business because many businesses hmm. support their employees to do a lot of volunteer time That's true. and so we felt that it was important for them to have a category to put up their like excellent that. volunteers I like that. And then we gave one more award, which was the Tri-Local First Award mm. um, for a company that showed excellence in promoting uh, shopping local. That's great. Now, did the did the people who got the awards, did they know ahead no. of time? No. There was only so a was few of us that knew ahead of time, so we had a lot that of behind fun, the curtain, yeah. um, which was very fun for me on that part yeah. um, to know who was going to win, but they didn't know. So. And, and what, do you think it was well received? It was very well received. And one of the things that we did differently is we actually had a panel of judges who um, who evaluated the nominees. And so they were outside the community with the exception of Travis Stovall, who's the executive director of mm -hmm. East Metro Economic Alliance. Um, and when they received the nominations, the names were not on the nominations. So oh, they so didn't know who it was. Judging. So it, it was yes. completely um, yeah. anonymous. And um, so we feel like it was a very impartial process. Yeah. Um, so really, the, those, the cream of the crop rose to the top. And although we have many, many excellent businesses, and it was a hard choice. Oh, we do. We do. This is a great community, and it really pulls together. Now, you, um, but obviously, any community has its problems and its issues. Mm -hmm. And as the chamber, you do a lot of advocacy work. And tell me a little bit about that, what, what it is you do. As That's far right. What I said how we speak it is we um, mm -hmm. represent the business voice to government. And the idea of that is, you know, business contributes so much to the community and so much to the economy. And one of the roles of many chambers is to advocate for business. And so when issues come up that will affect business regulations or business bottom line, that's where the, the chamber can become actively involved. And Give it an might be- an example of what you might- Well, it might be on a specific ballot measure or it might be with a government regulation or land use or an environmental mm, okay. issue. Um, this year, we revamped our whole government affairs program and um, rewrote our policy. And we're now actively taking stands on measures. And we did this year um, on measure 26141. I don't know if you remember that there was a, a Restricting yes, measure. I did. That was a big deal. It was. It was, deal. it was. And we felt like as a business organization that it was important for us to, to make a statement. So we held a forum where we heard the pros and cons from mm -hmm. both sides um, who were representing the issue. And then we took a stand in opposition of that particular measure because we felt that um, there's greater representation when you can vote for all of the city councilors and therefore it's, it's a greater democracy rather than just being able to vote for one. And we felt also that there was greater collaboration um, when you're not just looking at your district or your neighborhood. Mm, okay. and, and that this we're building our, or, our, our region on collaboration and regional collaboration. Sure. So it's really important to maintain that by looking at the whole picture, not just your specific district. Now, the voters concurred. Is they that did. Correct? They, they, did. they agreed with you. Now, what, what do you do to... You know, you, you make this decision, and then then what did what did the chamber do to try to, to um, educate people about the? Well, our main initiative to educate was actually to hold the forum where we invited okay. people to come and hear both sides of okay, the so issue. Okay, so this was and a public forum. We, it oh, was a okay. public forum, okay. and we had a moderator who um, we had a series of questions that the moderator asked, and each of the sides had a chance to present okay. their their thoughts about it. And and then from our standpoint, our government affairs committee then um, discussed it 
privately and we made a recommendation to the board and our board voted on it and then we pr we um, put out a press release about our statement um, to the community um, and then that's the, the typical type of process and in the future we'll also move to um, doing candidate endorsement and that type of thing oh, because sure. the kind of candidate that's in or the, the the legislature we need to be business friendly for our community mm -hmm. to grow and mm -hmm. so it's important from our standpoint that we are working with our legislators and helping them to understand what the issues are that sure maybe impede business growth. Is that typical for a chamber to, to do that? Well, we say in the chamber industry, if you've seen one chamber, you've seen one chamber. <laughs> it's kind of a joke. It's sort of corny. But the thing is, each chamber t tailors itself to the community. Mm -hmm. Some choose to do advocacy and some don't. And, and it's probably about 50-50 or maybe a little bit more mm -hmm. towards advocacy. I would say the larger chambers and larger communities absolutely do because it's part of what their role is right. to, to maintain a healthy business environment and, and economic growth. Right, right. I know growing up, I, the chamber to me was um, the visitor center kind right. of thing, you know. That's who you call when you want to find out what's going on in the city and you know, well, and places it's that to go too. to see. Yes, but it's gone way beyond that. Mm -hmm. Now you talked about um, the, uh, the growth, the economic growth and the stability of, of the um, you know, of the area and how the chamber supports that. Mm -hmm. You um, also mentioned try local first. You right. Know, buy, buy local and, and all that. You did a PSA, or you didn't, you did a PSA I actually. Did. But we had several different um, key members in the community mm -hmm. do some um, public service announcements about that. And do you mind if we show one yeah, of those Yeah, let's now? watch one then we can talk about it. Okay, let's. Hi, I'm Cheryl Swart with the West Columbia Gorge Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Michael Gonzalez with the Historic Downtown Gresham Business Association. Lots of community members have embraced the idea of Try Local First, but often we are asked, what can I do? Well, here are four things that you can do to support the Try Local First movement right here in your community. Number one, put a Try Local First sign in the window of your business. You can pick one up at the Gresham Area Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. Number two, identify goods or services that you typically do not purchase locally and see if there is a local solution. Number three, experience the flavor and uniqueness of your local farmer's market. And number four, utilize the local Chamber of Commerce offices or websites when looking for a product or service needed. These simple things can make a difference for our entire community. If you would like to learn more, go to trylocalfirst.org. So try local first. Remember, the job you save may be your neighbors. And thank you for shopping locally. So those, those uh, PSAs have been playing on Metro East channels for, for a while now, and, and the Tri-Local First uh, Committee meets here in our conference rooms, and they've, they've done a lot of work. They have, um, are they the ones that started that Charms? Yeah, the, the Charm Charms program. Thing? Yeah. So the Tri-Local First Committee is actually a committee of the chamber, and it ties right in with um, our concept of having a vibrant and prosperous local economy. And what part of what makes that happen is people investing in their own community, either with their business or by shopping locally. Mm -hmm. I think people underestimate uh, the impact that shopping in your own community has because most local vendors actually live in the community and reinvest back into their right. community and when their business is thriving they also hire locally so it all is a cycle and it's very important and it's one of the ways that the chamber supports economic development there and people don't think of shopping local as economic development but it actually really is and it's it is. that looking at Main Street and how is it thriving and not just our Main Street but in all the jurisdictions right, right. the downtown and what's happening in downtown and so that's one level of economic development and then there's the big picture economic development which is like industrial recruitment and bringing mm -hmm. large companies here and that type of thing we we are involved in that the, the jurisdictions here in um, East County take the lead on that but we support and I'm a part of many economic development groups where we talk about strategy and how we're going to do that and what are things that need to happen um, f to be business friendly. Um, but there's also a whole nother level that you may not think about and that's like economic development through tourism and that ties into our visitor mm -hmm. center mm -hmm. side of things and so we're, we're working right now on a variety of initiatives um, to bring together the region to look at well what do we need to do to be bicycle friendly to have more oh, bicycle, um, bicycle tourists here right. and we're very well poised because we're, we're the gateway to the gorge as well as to Mount Hood and so there's so many great trails the Springwater Trail there's yeah. the Gresham Fairview Trail there's all kinds of things yeah. that's a great area for Biking. Exactly. So that's just another way. There's so many ways that it impacts. 
So that's that's one of the things you'll be working on is the bicycle. Uh -huh. What do you call it? The tourism. bicycle tourism. Right. That's that's great. That's a yeah. great. That's a great. Uh, that's a great way to go because I think this would be a, a super area for that. So we're almost out of time, Allison. Anything else that you think people need to know about or should be thinking about besides the fact that it is the holiday season and they should be you know, shopping, shopping locally? Local. Absolutely. Well, I would say, you know, largely, um, like I said, how we're the spoke in the wheel. Mm -hmm. The chamber connects people in business. We have many events throughout the year that do that. But one of the things is it's not just us connecting a business but it's who all those people in the business know for mm -hmm. example if I'm working my network you may call me and say oh I need to know so-and-so and when I connect you to that person mm -hmm. then you're not only connecting to my network you're connected into their network right, and right. so we think of the chamber as actually the physical LinkedIn uh, yeah um, I was where you're, say you're, you're enlarging me, yeah. your network and that's why it's a value to people in the community and it's it's not just coming to the events because it's it's not just that right, it's about right having that resource and, and being able to be in the hub of things and if you don't know where that is to call and say hey I need to be connected here here and here whether it's yeah. economic development advocacy or you know just growing your business or education or what have you so it's yeah. in all of those ways if you're a business in East County and you're not a member of the chamber you're missing out <laughs> you're missing out thank you Allison so much and you're doing a great job there and um, very uh, happy about those awards you yeah. got this year. That's Thank great. you. We're very yes. pleased about that, too. Thanks for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. And please don't go away. We'll be right back with some, some more terrific information from 211 uh, Info. So stay tuned.